How's it going, guys? Past level question for acid base step one in intro medicine to CK. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, Melman underscore medical, and me, HL Man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group channel down below. And I'll start the clip. 45 year old man comes to visit in January. He reports a form of history of fatigue, mild depression. Vitals are normal. Laboratory studies show hemoglobin. Normal 15 grams per deciliter should be 13 to 17.5 in males, not menstruating women, 12 to 17.5 menstruating women. pH normal 7.38 should be 7.35 to 4.5. PCO2 slightly elevated at 46 should be. 33 to 44 millimeters of mercury, bicarbonate slightly elevated at 29, should be 22 to 28 millicolons per liter, which the bottom is mostly good diagnosis. Let's just have to the answer here, should I say? Carbon dioxide poisoning, wrong fucking answer. So I'll talk about the specific acid base disorder as we move the clip, but for starters, we're not going to have CO2 retention in carbon monoxide poisoning. Although uh, hemoglobin saturation with oxygen would be low, there's nothing physically slash mechanically wrong with the lungs. So we can expire CO2 perfectly fine. So CO2 shouldn't be elevated in CO poisoning. I mean, of course, I threw in this detail of him coming to physician in January to be a flagrant asshole because, yes, in some questions that can imply carbon monoxide poisoning, usage of home ventilator for heating. You should also know tangentially that month of the year is important, especially for family medicine when we talk about influenza vaccination. So they'll say a uh, woman comes to physician in fall or winter, you give the influenza vaccine. Uh, they'll say April, okay, and the answer is wrong for influenza. Another detail you should know for carbon monoxide poisoning is that actually a couple details. One, they'll ask you how if someone has CO poisoning, how long it takes to clear all of it out of the blood. The answer is going to be four months because the lifespan of an RBC is 118 days, okay? So for all of the RBCs that still have CO with high affinity bound in the hemoglobin, it's gonna take four months for it to completely leave the blood. Another detail you need to know is that head CT can show bilateral hypodensities of the globus pallidi. Sounds very fucking weird. Shows up on two questions, step one, step two. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, cardiac shun, wrong fucking answer. I mean. Garbage answer choice here. Don't really know what to say. Like, I mean, BSD, ASD, Eisenmenger syndrome. You're talking more pediatric diagnoses. Not, not that it's impossible in an adult. They don't say anything about, about a murmur here. Okay, so ASD, thick splitting of S2, BSD, holosystolic murmur uh, at the lower left sternal border. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, core pulmonale, wrong fucking answer. So even if you don't specifically know what the diagnosis is, the definition of core pulmonale is right heart failure due to a pulmonary cause. So, well, what are our right heart failure signs? JVD, we don't have that here. Peripheral edema, we don't have that here. They could say right heart structural changes, such as a boot-shaped heart on a chest X-ray. They could say they could say ECG shows right axis deviation that there's a right bundle branch block. Okay, those latter two findings mean right ventricular hypertrophy. So there's nothing here uh, that suggests that we have right heart decompensation. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, obstructive sleep apnea, correct answer. Now we can see the CO2 is elevated, bicarb's elevated. Now it's gonna be one of two things, this combination. It's either going to be, you have a chronic respiratory acidosis which is the same thing as saying we have a respiratory acidosis with metabolic compensation. So that's one of the things it could be. Or this combination could be a metabolic alkalosis with respiratory compensation. Okay, so it's going to be one of those two things. Now, if we had a metabolic alkalosis with respiratory compensation, that could be something like vomiting, right? I mean, you get a metabolic alkalosis with vomiting. It could be something like maybe Kahn syndrome, right? So there's there's those types of things to consider. Or uh, chronic respiratory acidosis. So that fits obstructive sleep apnea here. You need to know these are chronic CO2 retainers. And they can actually go on to get core pulmonale. That's exceedingly high yield. Although, as I just explained, it's not core pulmonale, but hypoxic vasoconstriction in the setting of conditions like obstructive sleep apnea, uh, severe kyphosis, scoliosis, ankylosing spondylitis. So you can ultimately get core pulmonale, hypoxic vasoconstriction, but we don't have that here, okay? So this is the only answer choice that fits this combination of high CO2, high bicarbonate. Let's, let's look at salicylate poisoning. Same thing as saying aspirin toxicity. Well, what kind of acid base disturbance do we get? It's going to be 
an acute respiratory alkalosis in isolation in the first 20-ish minutes, USMLE never fucking assesses it. It's more we just teach you that for the sake of understanding how acid-based disorders work with aspirin. What they assess on USMLE is always going to be mixed. So after 20-ish minutes, you're going to have what's called a mixed respiratory alkalosis hyphen metabolic acidosis. Okay, so aspirin duly, aspirin will cause the upregulation of respiratory centers in the brain, inducing respiratory alkalosis, hyperventilation, and simultaneously, well, aspirin is an acid, salicylic acid, so that'll cause metabolic acidosis. It's a long fucking discussion. It looks like compensation. It's not compensation, okay? So the reason we say mixed metabolic acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, because aspirin causes two simultaneous pathologies, Okay? They're both pathologies. We only say something is an acidosis or an alkalosis if it's a pathology. In this case, this patient with obstructive sleep apnea, as the correct answer, has a chronic respiratory acidosis. That's it. Or we can say this patient has a respiratory acidosis with metabolic compensation. That's it. We don't say the patient has respiratory acidosis and metabolic alkalosis, we don't say that because the alkalosis here, there's no alcohol, we don't say it because it, there's no pathology, the fact that the bicarb has gone up. That's not a pathology. With aspirin, you actually have pathology where the aspirin is causing your CO2 to go low, the aspirin is causing your bicarbonate to go low, okay? You treat aspirin toxicity with bicarbonate, it's a long discussion, point is, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. Make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.